The real world is a nightmare. Humans fighting robots to survive and human harvesting fields that go far off into the horizons. Some of you have asked us questions regarding these fields, such as how exactly do they work? Or why is it so easy for the resistance to rescue the awakened with little to no machine interference? Also, could it be that the children of the Oracle are red pills from Zion? Welcome to Matrix Explained. Welcome to the desert of the real. Today's first topic is, explain why the machines don't have better security at the fields and why the humans don't find it extremely strange that they can pull people out of the matrix so easily. Let's begin with the number of people connected to the matrix. In the film, we saw fields with hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of people. Yet Agent Smith stated that there are billions of humans trapped in these fields. Billions of people just living out their lives. Oblivious. So in actuality, human harvesting fields are not confined solely to the nearby surroundings of Machine City. There may be fields all over the world. The epicenter is Machine City, but the fields spread far beyond the machine's stronghold. The Matrix comic book titled Goliath illustrates this. The story of the comic takes place further in the future when a race of aliens attack planet Earth and destroys a power plant located in London, causing the death of 200,000 people. As mentioned before, the harvesting fields are not limited to only one location. There are billions of humans trapped inside the Matrix. Understanding this, we can now answer our viewers' inquiry. It's easy for the Red Pills to rescue the newly awakened from the fields because they are vast and there are many of them. The machines cannot watch all the fields at once, much less be everywhere at once. Think like a farmer. The bigger the field, the harder it is to supervise everything. One cannot oversee 100% of the crops at all times. The farmer can survey as much as possible, but some of the crops may still get eaten by critters. However, there is another reason why the resistance seemed to face little to no, well, resistance from the machines when rescuing humans from the fields. The robots are letting them. Zion is a creation of the machines to keep the one under control. So the machines might look the other way when they see a hovercraft arriving to rescue a human and take them to Zion. It's part of the architect's plan. It's the same reason why the machines don't just kill the humans who wake up. They are flushed out to either be saved by the red pills or be liquefied to feed the other prisoners. If they are rescued, they become part of the second layer of control. Moving on, Morpheus mentioned that he didn't believe in the Matrix until he saw the crops with his own eyes. Why? Why did he not believe? For the longest time, I wouldn't believe it. And then I saw the fields with my own eyes. But why didn't Morpheus believe in the Matrix until he saw the fields for himself? To understand this, listen to what Morpheus told Neo. Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. Morpheus's behavior may not be as ambiguous as we thought. He may be speaking from personal experience. Perhaps the person who saved Morpheus told him what the Matrix is when he was still trapped inside the simulation. But Morpheus just couldn't believe it. That's why Morpheus told Neo that no one can tell him what the Matrix is. Morpheus offered Neo the choice between the red and blue pill because he was giving him one last chance before discovering the truth. A chance that Morpheus may not have had. Morpheus had to be shown the endless fields of human power plants and crops to finally accept what the Matrix is just like he showed Neo. However, Morpheus could have been awakened and not seen the horrors of the real world. He could have been rescued and taken directly to Zion. But the man just could not believe the real world, so he returned to where he was found and saw the fields with his own eyes. Only then did Morpheus believe the truth. The concept of seeing is believing is a reference to Thomas the disciple, who had to see Jesus for himself to believe that he had risen. This reference is reinforced thanks to Neo's Matrix name, Thomas Anderson. Both Morpheus and Neo were skeptics and doubted the truth about the Matrix. 
But just like Thomas the disciple, after seeing, they started believing. Our final questions are, why does age matter so much when waking people up? And did the children in the Oracle's living room wake up to the real world? I feel I owe you an apology. We have a rule. We never free a mind once it's reached a certain age. It's dangerous. The mind has trouble letting go. The reasons why an adult would not accept reality has a biological and psychological explanation. Psychologically speaking, children who have barely experienced life are more susceptible to change because they don't have much to lose. Adults, on the other hand, have spent their entire lives building a family and social standings. To be told that everything in their lives was fake could lead any of them to suffer a heart attack or stroke. The shock would be too much for them to handle. The second reason is biological, since our brains change over time. In neurology, there is something called neuroplasticity. This is the brain's ability to adapt to new and different situations. Humans tend to lose this ability as they get older. This is why it's easiest to learn new things at a young age, like trying to learn a new language. Moving on to the next part of the question, once they are awakened, the potentials need to be trained. Just as the Merovingian has a boarding school to train young exiled programs, Zaya may have a type of school to train future members of the resistance. Kid mentions in Matrix Revolutions that he didn't finish weapons training. There is a possibility that the children living with the Oracle are in Zion, because in the real world, Kid delivered a spoon to Neo. I just had to give something to Neo, a gift from one of the orphans. He made me swear to get it to you before you left. He said you'd understand. Notice that it is a spoon from Zion, being delivered by the kid who was going through training. This means that wherever Kid is training, the Spoon Boy is also there. Kid could not have been contacted by the Spoon Boy inside the Matrix because he hadn't yet been assigned to a crew. This leads us to believe that the potentials are from Zion and part of their training is to spend time with the Oracle within the Matrix, which is somewhat counterproductive if you believe that the Oracle isn't helping the humans. Maybe she is manipulating them from childhood. Now that we theorize that the Oracle could be training the Red Pills in the Matrix, it could be the reason why Morpheus never questioned her. Maybe he was awakened at a young age and was indoctrinated by the Oracle to fulfill her goals. Before we go, we received an interesting comment from one of our subscribers. The Architect is the father of the Matrix, but the Oracle is the mother of Zion. This could very well be true because everything that happens in Zion may be controlled by the Oracle from the children's education to their combat training. But do you agree? Why didn't Morpheus believe the truth about the Matrix? Why is it so suspiciously easy to save humans from the power plants? Are the potentials children from Zion being trained by the Oracle? For Matrix Explained, please leave a like and subscribe. And thank you for visiting the Desert of the Real.